mystery and horror, the air itself is filled with monsters. Children of the night, what music they make. Well, hello, all you monster fiends, and thank you for joining us for another deep dive, factoid filled episode exploring Hollywood's most famous monsters. I am your mistress of ceremony, Sam. Sam. And I am joined by Dan from Bleeding Marvelous. Say hello, Dan. What? I, I messed that up. <laughs> As always, Dan from Bleeding Marvelous. I miss the always out. You're always here. True. Yeah. True. True. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> Truth. Well, welcome to a new episode of the Monsters Up North podcast. Today is going to be fucking interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Um, I feel like I should get the disclaimer out of the way with and we crack on open because I've got, it's, I've got it's some things. things yeah. I, yeah. I used the word dissect today and I feel yeah. that is probably the best word to describe what I want to do. Correct. So, everything discussed in today's episode is our opinions and our opinions alone. If you'd like to discuss anything from today's episode, please come and join us on our Facebook pages, the Discord, or our comment section, where we can have an open discussion. But what we won't have is anyone coming for us and telling us our opinions are wrong. We can all agree to disagree in fandom, so let's keep it fun. Keep it kind and keep the toxic behaviour out. Of nerdism. And all together now. Don't be a dick. <laughs> You're doing it to the wedding chain. Don't, <laughs> Don't that came be from. a dick. <laughs> it's, Don't uh, be mm -hmm. a dick. <laughs> it's a week of being 44 and the menopause has finally hit. That's what I'm saying. So good luck, everyone. Good luck. Welcome to a new era. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Right. Oh. So, call it, I'm going to I want to tell you this now before I say the intro. I've been calling this movie Color Out of Purple all week. <laughs> yeah, it's not that's not the film now. Yeah, no no one's Bobby Goldberg in this one. No. No, no cuz Anthony was like you you doing the color purple? Like, no. <laughs> that's not so the same different. film. Very not the same. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean there's there is some monsters in that but not to the degree that we are going to. So, Colour Out of Space is a 2019 science fiction Lovecraftian horror directed and co-written by Richard Stanley, based on the short story of the same name by H.B. Lovecraft, starring Nicolas Cage, Jolie Richardson and Elliot Knight. In the Necronomicon, that's where the Colour of Space is. I have it in here. Wow. Um, this is the, the full commemorative edition of the necronomicon written by mr hp lovecraft that himself i do not support the man it's his work i'm supporting let me just make that very clear very clear well it will consume you <laughs> mm. as monsters of north brings you color out of space it will consume you is actually the tagline yes I do, on every intro I do, I do actually use the taglines, even if they don't go with the end bit that says, and Monsters Up North brings you. <laughs> There's been a few times they don't go. <laughs> this this movie is one of the, like, I will die on the hill when I say it's one of the most visually stunning mm -hmm. films. Mm -hmm. um, with how it's shot, with the colour, just the, the colour, not not to use the, the you'll get, we'll get there, but it's magenta. Just the the colouring, the, the the work that was done on the entire film, the premise of everything, and Nicolas Cage. Um, that is where I will leave it, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> so. I'm going to put this out here right now. That felt like an acting class from Nicolas Cage because that man gave range mm -hmm. in everything he did. Yep. And you may look at it as in, oh, it's just Nicolas Cage. Kiss of, is it Kiss of a Vampire? Vampire that is, this, yeah. That's it. And he's like, he's like hamming it up again. No, that man was not. He was genuinely acting. That's how I felt when I watched it. I was actually taken aback by how brilliant he came across in this movie. Yeah. In And I say in every aspect, and we will talk about it as we go on, because he does change a lot. 
Yeah. And this. It's when he talks like this. <laughs> when he does his trump. Did you hear yes. the trump? It's not intentional, just so you know, but there's a section where he goes off on one and his whole voice turns into Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> it's like fake news, fake news, everybody. China. <laughs> Puffer feet. <laughs> You know, he's, he goes off on one and it's just like, I, I don't know. that it, it worked in the context of the movie, but mm-hmm. all I heard was Trump, so it took me out a little bit. But Well, I want to give one interesting, it's not an interesting fact, it's just a fact. Lavinia is yes. not the girl from Carrie. No, she's not. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, She it's... looks very much like her. Yeah, yeah, this is... Um... God, I've gone blank on her name, but um, something I, Arthur starts with an M. I didn't Madison, recognize I like that. I didn't recognize the name at all, yeah. which kind of threw us because the girl from Carrie had a very interesting surname, and then I was like, "Oh, I don't know." But you, she looks exactly like her. It was quite, but I did write that down. <laughs> Lavinia is not in Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> This movie did actually score eighty six percent in Rotten Tomatoes. Now I know a lot of people don't go off a Rotten Tomatoes score; they do think it's a bit bullshit, and that's fine. But I still kind of do look at it, and I thought, "Wow, that's a good score for a Nicolas Cage movie." It is. Um, this is uh, Richard Stanley's baby. Um, yeah. Now he and himself, as a human, is a shit human. Um, but his work. This was only his third film he directed and wrote he did two others um one was called hardware or hardwire something like that and then there was one prior to that um but richard stanley is is, is a name for some reason like people respect the work that richard stanley's done um and so when he said he was going to co-write the screenplay for this and uh direct it everybody's like okay yeah no we've got a lot of time for that and um he was then going to go on to do this as part of a tri- trilogy for the, yeah. uh, the whole, um, uh, like the the Lovecraftian universe. Uh, he was going to go on to do the Dulwich Horror next. Um, I got it written down. Um, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. It's something completely yeah. different. <laughs> I'm sure it was Dul- <laughs> the Dulwich Horror was going to be his next one, and then there was going to be a third one. Um, but. I think this one stands alone perfectly fine and it got cancelled mm. because the the man himself did something really fucking shit and he deserves to be in oh. somewhere. Does he uh, deserve it, what the characters get in this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I didn't read about him. Um, all I know is that it's it is it's a passion project of his um and this was the first film he first film after his last one which was done in like 96 or something so it was like a huge return to cinema for him yeah um it originally started in 2013 something like that yeah and it just took a long time to i didn't read the i really didn't read the ins and outs of studio involvement and who was doing what now and where all I know is that it started. It originally started in 2013 and didn't get made until 2018 for a 2019 release. Yeah. That's a long time. Yeah, it is. I mean, considering the book was originally written, this story was originally published in the 1927 mm. edition. Oh, you are good. Amazing stories. Yeah. Um, that went on to then be part of this book, that is which is the Necronomicon. Beautiful. Um, this is like it's proper leather bound for you audio people. You've it's not like, you've not broke the spine, have you? You've not no. I don't crack them. No, I never crack <laughs> them. Um, but I, I, I have read some of it. Um, I like the fact that the pages are all smoker coloured as well. Um, even though I don't smoke. Um, and then it's got a map of the whole of um, like Innsmouth, Arkham, Dulwich, uh, Dunwich, even um, Kingsport. Um, you know, all the, like all the places that. Yeah, are... I'm just, I'm just taken aback by the front of it. So I can say that my books, my books are just vintage because they've got smoke damage to them. This one just is made to look that way, but um, yeah, I, I bugged, bugged Rob one year to to buy me the Necronomicon. Um, but this one's the best weird tales. This one, so um, it is worth the investment. I. It wasn't very expensive. This was 20 quid. 
Oh, I'd pay that. I, yeah. I, personally, I, mean, I would have paid a bit more, but that's... Yeah, I mean, I was for, for me, for a book this size and mm -hmm. for this well like, sort of bound, I would have thought this was a £45, £50 book at oh, least. I, my um, mum's got a, um, a, a, a Victorian-style library in her living room. She did a whole... Because she doesn't use her living room. She uses a conservatory. So she did a whole living room with a Victorian style. It's beautiful. Stunning. Um, but I, she collect. Well, she. I've kind of forced a collection on her of <laughs> Barnes and Nobles books. Yeah, and they're like thirty five pound each. And I get her one every Christmas and every birthday or Mother's Day or something. And she's kind of built a collection up. I think I know she'll never listen to this episode. So I think the next one would probably be the Edgar Allan Poe one. Yeah. Um, but I really want to get her the Grey's Anatomy because I was I, like, she's I've a got... nurse. Downstairs, mm. I've got um, some really old books. I've got the original Grim Fairy Tales from 1927, like an, uh, an edition mm. of 1927. I've got um, medical journals from the when? late late 20s as well, early 20s. I've got all, all sorts of weird stuff. My front room is like a museum. You wouldn't think, judging by what you see here, you wouldn't think <laughs> my front room is the way it is. We've got taxidermy. We've got medical specimens in our front room. It's totally different. <laughs> this to to this bright and colorful room right here yeah it's it my like i say my 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 dad always calls it the house of death and my other dad mm. thinks it's a, like a museum and he, he he ran around the first time he came around with it being decorated the way it is he's taking photos of everything sending it to all of his friends he stood in front of the pin prince of darkness that we've got downstairs the tim curry big bust and he mm -hmm. took a photo so the horns were coming out of his head my dad's 72 he found that hilarious and he was sending it like to all his friends dad. He was putting it as his po like his like pictures on Instagram and all this sort of stuff, and I was like, "Dear God, Dad!" I feel like my dad would like that because my dad loves my collection. He yeah. loves that I'm a collector. I don't understand what it is, but because he's the he's the one who's you know drilled it in my head in the box in the box. <laughs> That's why I don't take anything out, or I keep the box, keep yeah. the box. Um, my dad would be the same. I have a. I used to, as a kid, have a huge because I have a huge fascination with Victorian uh, medical yeah. books and the diagrams that were in them. I've got loads of diagrams on the walls know. downstairs. Oh, I love them, and I just I don't know where they ever went. The only books I have as a kid, from being a kid, is a set of Winnie the Pooh books. Because my sister asked if because my sister's got the ones. I know the ones. Pink, blue, yellow. It's a four book set. Yep. Only they're not that big. Yeah, I've got them in the aunt's room. And we had these two book of um, children's poetry. I don't know where uh, the covers went years ago, but they, they essentially they were just red books. My mom has one on her bedside table and my sister has the other one. And it's where the Jabberwocky was in there and um, Horrid, Hag oh, Haggis the Horrid or something like that. And yeah, really grim poetry <laughs> for children. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I've ne I've never read H.P. Lovecraft. I've up until we did Reanimator. Yeah, I've never. I mean, I, I watched um, Orange County, uh, the Lovecraft Country. That's it. Yes, I watched that, and that was probably the closest thing that I got to say. Oh, that's H.P. Lovecraft. Um, so I'm finding that interesting. Intriguing is probably the more the better word. Yeah, I think. If you know a bit more about Lovecraft, then go back and watch Lovecraft Country again and mm -hmm. it, you see it with a totally different eye because you're like, okay. But uh, a fact that people don't know is that Arkham Asylum, from the Batman DC comics, mm -hmm. was a name taken from H.P. Lovecraft. He came up with Arkham. It was one of his places. But they used it in the DC comics because they wanted to say about Arkham being full of insane people, which if you read Lovecraft, you get the, the connotation. The insanity, there. yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that even DC led into Lovecraft. Well, I okay. wondered, I was, because obviously I don't, I, I like I've said, I don't know H.P. Lovecraft. I mean, if we were going to say Edgar Allan Poe, Tony David, don't say <laughs> But um, it was when, obviously, Nicolas Cage's connection to Batman through Kick-Ass when he does the line, which is one of my favourite lines in Kick-Ass. Oh, no, it's the Kryptonite line. That's it. It's got never to you, Batman. Ignore it's us. Superman, yeah. Yeah. It was Superman, wasn't he? Like, they did mention Superman in this movie. 
Yeah, he was Superman, wasn't he? For a split second, not for very for, long. Oh, for a split second. But in Kick-Ass, he, he does my favourite line, which is probably my favourite Nicolas Cage line ever, and it's um, release, release the kryptonite. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it justice. And there's probably people screaming at us thinking I've butchered it. <laughs> Mine's always the one in um, Face Off that's kind of like incredibly creepy, but yet yeah, hilarious at the same time about eating a peach. <gasps> It's so icky. It's so oh, face, face off, it's the it's the when he does the whole take your face off. Yeah. He's so great with his hands, isn't he? He's um, just yeah. I I have a theory on Nicolas Cage. Yeah, I think this, he knows exactly what he's doing, and everybody's had him down as being like a madman. The guy knows what he's doing, he's playing the long game. <laughs> you get it, you get it. Because think about it, he is a coppola. He, yeah, is, he is his his actual surname is not Cage. No. It's Coppola. And no. he comes from a fucking pristine cinematic history fucking family. Like it's huge. It's Francis Ford, wasn't he Apocalypse Now? Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah, and uh, Godfather. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's in his sister and his his cousin, Sophia. Okay, and, yeah. yeah, huge. It's a huge fucking family affair. And I always but I, but I always felt he always acted the way he felt he needed to act because of the name that he has. Because everyone, he, I know we call it he's Nicolas Cage and he will always be Nicolas Cage. Yeah. But in Hollywood, he is a Coppola. Yeah. And I've always felt that he just was acting to the level of where he felt he should be at. Because, and it's always been a little bit more elevated than what we probably needed. But for me, it always worked. I have never not watched a Nicolas Cage thing and went, well, that was shit. I don't know. Because he was shit. I don't <laughs> see it. <laughs> he's done some that are questionable. But because um, he went through that whole phase, wasn't he, where he had the tax issue and he had to make film after film after <laughs> film after film to get himself out of it. Oh, but, bless um, him. but right an now. Underrated one, an underrated one to watch if you haven't watched his pig. I've heard people have brought that up yeah. to us. I feel like this is such a great era for Nicolas Cage right now that he is choosing horror. Yeah. I feel like this is where he was always meant to be. Because he can go that extra mile, that mm -hmm. insanity level, that that turn it up to 11. You know, he can do that <laughs> on this. And people are very much in the way of like, yes, Nicolas Cage, it works. Mm -hmm. And he's, so, oh, what did I see him in? That, that It was like a Five Nights at Freddy. Um, the Willy's Wonderland. Didn't say a goddamn word, Oops. and I loved every second of it. Yeah, massive. I've, the unbearable weight of massive talent with uh, Pedro Pascal is another one. I've heard he, that is phenomenal. It is hilariously cheese on toast, but it works at the same time because it is a comedy, um, and he does flashbacks to his old self. You know when he was Superman, and he did the rolling in on Parky. Yeah, and, you know, that oh, guy is the guy he does flashbacks to. Ooh. So it's yeah, it's like raising Arizona. Oh my god, oh, that's, so, that's one of my mum's favorite 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 films is Raising Arizona. That and another Nicolas Cage movie, Moonstruck. <laughs> she fucking loves Moonstruck. Yeah, that's and he's the one with Cher, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She absolutely. Oh, I, I do love it now, but back when I was a kid, I was like, <laughs> not again. Please, <laughs> don't do it again. <laughs> but even his portrayal as Dracula. In um, the recent one he did with... Nicholas Holt. Yeah. I thought that was just... For, I mean, I watched that in the Pope's Exorcist in the same day, and I was like, I am being tread to some good horror right now. I'm liking this. That It was surprising for me because I thought he was going to go... OTT with it like I thought we were going to get full on Nicolas Cage with that one and we got the sort of bouncing off the red Nicolas mm -hmm. Cage where it wasn't in the red it wasn't that far gone that you were just like oh for fuck's he sake. wasn't the count from Sesame Street is how I thought he was going <laughs> to portray him <laughs> yeah. he was just sort of bouncing off the line and we were like it's fine it's Nicolas Cage it works yeah, it works um, but yeah I was quite impressed with that one as well you know surprisingly and this was no different. This is just, it's, I just felt, I felt something by him and I don't quite know what it is. Yeah, I felt I, empathy I, for him. Massively, yeah. hugely. 
because he was the one it ultimately affected the most and he wasn't the one that you thought it was going to ultimately affect the most no so but i don't want to and then they yeah. like, talk about the whole horror, horror film well the movies it's not it's not an original it's been done one this is what the list i had one two three four times before yeah. Um originally in 1965 with um a really good misfit song called Die Monster Die. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, Die Monster Die was the first one in 1965 and then the curse was 1980. Oh, I don't know if that's a 6 or an 8. So okay. we're going to we're going to say 87. Um and then The Color from the Dark which was in 2008 and then the same title, Colour Out of Space, 2010, and then Colour Out of Space, 2019. Yeah. So the movie is not an original take of the book. It's just a different, I guess, different. I didn't really read into the other ones to see what the differences were. They combined a little bit more of the Lovecraftian world in this one. Mm. Because in the original movie, Lavinia doesn't exist. Uh, in the original story, Lavinia doesn't exist. It's another brother. There's three sons. Right. Um, Lavinia is actually from the Dunwich Horror story. Right. And they brought her in as the as the the they brought Lavinia in as the technically as in the character she is in that story and planted her in as the the daughter in this story, doing similar things to what she was doing. God, in yeah. the sandwich. So she is a HP Lovecraft character through and through. She's mm-hmm. just not supposed to be there if you're staying true yeah. to the, the colour of space. That's the, space. <laughs> at least it's not calling it the colour out of purple. Um the book is the book's orig- is from the point of view of an unnamed severe. Yes. So the minute I knew that, I was like, Oh, I get the severe's job now. Yeah. I get why he's here, because in the book he's the one again, very much like Carrie. Yep. piercing it together through documents and mm-hmm. and testimony and shit like that. Yeah. It is quite cleverly done how he named the characters or the characters are named because the narrator is Ward Phillips. That's his is that the original that's the original voice at the beginning. Yeah, the narrator is the guy who is the hydrologist. He's the same Right. Guy. Got you. Got you. Now Ward Phillips is actually a play on H.P. Lovecraft. Howard Philip Lovecraft. Ah! Ward Phillips. So he used his dun, part of his dun. name to name this character as the, the mm-hmm. narrator, as the guy that goes into it. So I thought that that was incredibly clever. And it's one of those things, unless you know it, you don't you don't see it. Yeah. But yeah. It's it's odd. It's the the whole this whole film is incredibly strange. But if you go into a Lovecraft thinking you are going to get a simple storyline, you're mistaken. You're mistaken. I feel like I've learned that now. Yeah, batshit from minute start to finish. Yeah, this doesn't start batshit though because it's quite common and soothing. And there was one thing that really annoyed us as a <laughs> it was the it was the it was the witch thing. Um, it's the fact that she when he kind of like he, he goes to her and is it this or is it Wiccan and she kind of like rolls her eyes at the Wiccan sign yeah. and then she mentions that she follows the rule of three and I was like well, that's bitch what, what are you yeah um where, te- where do you stand she I literally looked into what that actually was she performed at the beginning um it's called the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram right what is what she's doing at the beginning when she's standing there mm-hmm praying to the elements or whatever she's doing about her mum's cancer, isn't it? That's what she's... She's talking to the... I mean, she's doing the the witchcraft thing. She's talking to the deities. She's calling the elements. She's... But it just felt like... And this is probably just me as an eclectic, that I... It was... She was pulling from all sorts, which is fine. Totally fine within what we do. It was a very, like, higgledy-piggledy thing. Like you say, she pulls from all sorts because... It was actually from the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn that this oh. this thing was made from, and that was invented by three Freemasons, the the, the Golden Dawn, mm. um, and then that dissolved in 1903 um, because they said it was too uh, spiritual because they hadn't quite hit, they hadn't quite hit that Victorian era where seances were at peak 
or it, it didn't it coincide was a good that very well. Game. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, they were saying that it was it was too occultist. The metaphysics of the whole thing were too hard to understand, um, and they said it was more to like being an old witch. Witch, you, you're a witch, you know. But I got better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, basically, it was they they then decided to try another way of trying to revamp this this religion. Um, so they looked into it and, and they renamed it the Hermetic Kabbalah. So they looked mm-hmm. into spiritual development, personal development, awareness of the elements, astrology, tarot, geomancy, scrying, um, astral travel and alchemy. Um, and then what happened with that? That took off more than the previous incarnation. It makes sense. In- can't. But it makes sense as to why, yeah. because it has so many different elements to it. And I know I mentioned like eclecticism is kind of like just picking it. It's not picking and choosing. It's just kind of like finding a path like in different ways. But yeah. when it comes to Wicca, I feel like that's very much of its own thing because that is a religious thing, whereas yeah. spirituality kind of like and the way I do things is I just I, I'm interested yeah. in other ways, but never the religious side. Well, what they actually think with this beginning spell is that she is a clueless young girl that's dabbling in things she shouldn't be dabbling in. That my mother keeps telling me regular. And that she actually called for this event inadvertently. I feel she did. So that's what the premise, they've left it up to you to make your mind up about this, but the opening scene is Lavinia calling on the elements in a stone circle burning sage, waffing something round. She's got some with, sort of weird compass thing. I don't know what that... a white horse. It was so very... She was in pagan robes, you know. Yeah, it's Pinterest p- picturesque, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but um, then, obviously, um, Ward comes up and chats to her and says who he is, and she's like, you're on my land, get off, get out of my land. And, uh, <laughs> and then they, she sort of... They have an exchange and he's saying that he's there to test the water and she then rides off on a white horse, which is so weird. Um, I don't know what that symbolised. It, I it don't just know if it did anything. Yeah. I think it's just there for the colour. I think it's to it get sense. to, like, because she's on a white horse. Mm-hmm. Um, if there was another connotation, I couldn't find anything about it and it didn't ring like, wow, this is, you can clearly was, see this is something yeah. Um, oh yeah. But when she goes, she rides a horse back to her house, and it is the most random thing. It's a big house in the middle of nowhere on these beautiful fields on an alpaca farm or with an alpaca farm on the side of it, um, and it's a big, huge, like. Well, it's America. It's America. It's American. Yeah. Mon- it's an American house. They like. I would never understand how they get them as big as they are, but they are made out of cardboard, yeah. and. Do you know how much the Mel Pacos cost? <laughs> it's a running thing. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get mentioning it all the time. Um, I I quite, I didn't, when I first met Lavinia, I thought, oh, I'm going to fucking hate you. <laughs> and I don't. Yeah. I don't because throughout the whole thing, she's kind of the voice of reason. Like, get the fuck out of here. She's the one holding everybody together. She's the one. Until she's, until she's not. Until she's not, yeah. She's the one that, her dad doesn't really like her much. I don't get the impression at the beginning. I don't I'm think he listens to her. Yeah. I don't think he, I don't, to be honest, I don't think he listens to any of his older children. Because there's two, in the in the family dynamic, there's mom, dad, mom played by Jolie Richardson, which by the way, not her best performance. Teresa. Yeah. Yeah. Not her, not Jolie's best performance. There she was didn't something... get much acting in it, though, to be fair. She she didn't have a lot of scenes, except for the big one, which we'll come to. But really, there isn't a lot of her being her, really. It was just when she was with him, she's just, it, oh, I don't know. And the, well, I will get into it, and I'll I'll hash it out in my brain, and I'll figure out if I liked her or not. Um, just on first watch, I was like, oh, bad choices. <laughs> uh, but the dynamic is mom, dad, uh, older brother, middle sister, younger kid. The kid is from House on Haunted Hill, right? The kid. Haunted of Hill House. Haunted of Hill House. He's also um, Billy Maximoff from 
Doctor yes. Strange, Doctor Earth Madness. That's it. Yes, yes, yes. He was and... also David Glatzel in uh, The Devil Made Me Do It, The Conjuring. He was David, the young kid that was originally uh, Blythe Manor. Best. Was he in Black? I think he, might, he was in. I think he was in one of the Mike Flanagan things. But now he's about. Um, it's only been a matter of four, five, five years, and he is almost a mid teenager now, and he looks nothing like that kid. It's another one of those cases where you log on, like the kid from the um, the Insidious movies that starts off and he's about oh, to yeah. go, and now he's an adult in university by the end of the movies, and it was just like. I don't know what I've been doing with my life. <laughs> where have I been? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those what have where, I been doing? That is the actual same. Per, what? How dare people grow? It's like oh, the Daniel Radcliffe syndrome that everybody has. They still see him as the kid from the Philosopher's Stone, and when they see him as like a almost forty year old man that's a dad, and you know, <laughs> I know. it's it's dev- it's hard written. I've got this beautiful picture of my godson in my hallway on my hallway table and he's like he looks like a little doll he's just so dull. and now he's like a talking walking person and i'm like no stop stop this aging thing yeah, i don't okay. like What's i that? don't like it and um, but that kid is a fucking tremendous actor to to do what he did yep that takes something and to be okay afterwards to go on and do other stuff is a testament to that child. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because he's a child that he can kind of do it and kind of, because I feel like as an adult, that might fucking stay with you a bit, but he, he pulled it off. Yeah. And then to go on to do, like I said, the conjuring, uh, the devil made me do it. So there's that whole thing where he gets possessed in that as well. So the kid has put himself through the ringer, but come out the other side, he seems like that's something I've always wondered about, you know, with, because kids, when they used to work in the olden days, they put them through mentally traumatic things in that they had to lose weight, they had to wear corsets, they had to do this, they had to do that. They weren't allowed to eat for weeks. They put them on slimming tablets. So, you know, God, do you know what just descri- everything you've just said there was Judy Garland. Yeah, well, I think that's where my brain went. <laughs> <laughs> Judy Garland. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's one of those things where they put the kids through the ringers like that. But now this is a whole nother level because you'll see, you can physically see things yeah. and you're, the kids are transported into actual situations that could, that n- not necessarily could happen, but they can see with their eyes. Yeah. You know, it's not CGI for these kids. It is actual physical things. awareness of these things. And, and I know they know it's pretend, but it's got to stick with them in one way or There's, another. I feel like if they don't, if they don't have a strong foundation at home, yeah. Then, then maybe it would slip a bit. But my God, if I'm thinking it right, he is the kid from Haunting on Hill House. I'll have a look. And even that was, I'm sure he's definitely done something Flanagan verse wise. I think you're right. I think it might be um, House on Haunted Hill, but Haunting <laughs> of Hill House. That one. <laughs> I've done it twice. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it, I actually said it twice because I can't get an outright because apparently this movie has been called the, I even said it to Paul we're doing the colour out of purple I was like that doesn't yeah, sound right it was him yeah was it yeah you won't be able to see sorry audio people tune into YouTube if you want to see what I'm about to show Sammy but that's him now <gasps> oh my god how adorable is he yeah that's a little kid he is going to be a heartbreaker but that's my see what I mean brain can't take it but yeah it was he was a child in one division. Blind, 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 Matt. No, the other one. Blind Manor. House. No. Blind Manor is good. But uh, House, house. On, No, Haunted, Haunted of Hill House. <laughs> sorry, Mike. <Mike's laughs> <gonna go laughs> watch it, but never mind. Oh, I'm sorry. It's one of my favourite TV shows. I fucking love it. I love anything that man does. All of um, the House of Usher is my favourite of all of them. I like Raul Coley, so he won out mm. for me. So he was in Blythe Manor, and I, lo- I was, I had very little expectations for that. Fucking loved it, <laughs> absolutely loved it. Um, but yeah, so you've got the family, you've got the the family who have moved into the the Nicholas Cage's father's house. Now I don't know if they say this right off the bat, but they have done it on the back of the mum. Teresa having a huge operation and uh, she had a mastectomy yeah. after, I don't know if she had breast cancer or 
could have it potentially was, had yeah. breast cancer. Yeah, she, you don't really know because um, what's her name? Lavinia is that's what she's supposedly praying to or about when she's doing the opening scene. Mm-hmm. She does mention something about Mother. the cancer is gone or the cancer's not there or something like that. It's something mm-hmm. along those lines. Um, but cancer will feature heavily all the way through this in mm-hmm. one way or another. So, um, not in the way yeah. that we know it as humans, but it, it's part yeah. of the, the story as a whole. Um, the house itself and it, the the garden itself is very beautifully done, mm. just as it is in this scene, like in the without anything else happening. You know, in in the green grass, it's very luscious. It's very flowers, picturesque. There's a well. There's a barns out in the garden, and it's very and and they have a dog, Sam. Yeah, thanks. Sam. Oh, it's not the it's not my first Sam dog, and it will not no. be my last. But instantly, instantly, yeah. I am. I am, do I get on the dog website? Did the dog die website? And I was like, no, because I have a feeling if I do, it's going to just give it, it'll tell us something. So I was like, I'm going to have to, I'm just going to have to go with it. Um, to get but it's not as bad, you think? No, no. Um, no, there's worse. Yeah. There's oh, worse. Yeah. There's much worse. <laughs> yeah. Um, But for, for a movie, when it started to get into it, I'm not joking, Dan, I felt uncomfortable. Like, me insides felt uncomfortable and I just like I was like oh this is clearly so it's doing this movie's doing something because I don't feel great at all but at the beginning part I was like oh calm it's all calm and then it it built up yeah and it kept building until the end where I was like yep kind of breathe (laughs) and now I've got to go to sleep (laughs) yeah it's it's they they set the scene as if to say that like the kids don't really want to be there, but they understand why they're there. So they're doing everything just to appease their parents. Yeah. Um, their dad just wants to start fresh. The dad's called Nathan. Nicholas Cage is called Nathan. You've got Teresa, who's Jolly Richardson, yeah. Lavinia, who's the oldest daughter, Benny, who's the oldest son, and then you've got Jack, who's the youngest kid. Yeah. Then you've got Ezra, this weird old dude that lives on in a shed and somewhere who, on the property. Who's who's the weird old dude? Tommy Chong of, <laughs> of, of Cheech and Chong um, <laughs> fame. And he is Mr. Hippie, Dippy, crazy man. Oh, but how weird. Who would not love to live that life? But he's not, though. That's the thing. That's that's the impression you're given. He lives in a shack. He's a shack dude. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? He's like, yeah. no running water. Pisses no, because he, no, he, he gets it from the stream. He gets it from the source. And he's kind of befriended the oldest son, Benny, who yeah. it just gets stoned all day. Sounds yep, great. Much. You're you living in the middle of fucking nowhere on an alpaca farm Probably. and your dad just wants to be an alpaca farmer. I'm like, you know oh, let me just get high. <laughs> Do you know how much they cost? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Not until I looked it up. And Did you look it up? Any between anywhere between a thousand dollars to thirty thousand dollars an alpaca, depending on the quality of the alpaca um, fur, um, and also the lineage of the alpaca, if it's purebred or not, whether you're farming it for it's just its hair or meat or stuff like that. I have two downstairs in my front room, babies, the ethically sourced, but they are stuffed. And they are. <laughs> you did I mention love you them. living with had taxidermy in it. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely love them. One of them's called Geronimo after the one that died of TB. He's black and he's <laughs> he's about a foot and a half tall and he's lovely. The second one is hanging from bloom from my ceiling and his name is Alpaca Capone. Um, yeah, we name them all. They've all got stupid names. Um, yeah. We've got Yaki Chan, which is a yak skull. We've got <laughs> Keanu Reeves pheasant. We've got uh, Jimmy Fallow Deer. We've got, um, <laughs> honestly, we've got loads. Uh, Bat Damon. Uh, <laughs> uh, we've got Hornbill Murray, Sigourney Beaver. They're all like, we've got just, they're all named because, you know, we're sad fuckers. But yeah, it's, it's just a part time thing. But alpacas are the softest thing in the universe. I've got a ginger one and a blackhead one, and they're both downstairs. And uh, when I say they're ethically sourced, they were still sadly stillborn babies that were um, 
given to be immortalized forever but they're well looked after and I appreciate them for what they are so they're my babies they're my babies my boys I love that I I had I'm, I'm, I'm not really into taxidermy even though I think it's beautiful um my my mum has is my mum or my dad one of the two has a thing for because of their Victorian library yeah. my dad wanted some odysseys and I was right. like oh okay let's go and have a look at some taxidermy so at for the love of horror me and carolyn go to the taxidermy stand <laughs> and i didn't realize carolyn had a phobia of taxidermy <laughs> until we were standing in their little nook yeah. and i went to go and rub the top of a little chick of its head and carolyn was like what are you doing and i was like what this and i ran it down her, <laughs> down her arm every finger down her arm and she freaked out but the Paul does. Paul has Paul has a lot of Yeah, I love him. I love it. It's just it it I rather give them a home where they're gonna be looked after and appreciated, which is in our house. Yeah, and I, um, I do love a, 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 some horrible museum or like they'll be lonely there. They're not lonely in that house. They've got no, plenty of they've got a lot of love. I'm not even gonna tell you what Anne said he would do when the cats go. So you can make them into slippers. I draw the line of cats and dogs. I will not have a cat or a dog. Oh God, no, no, no! No. I don't. I don't think I've ever seen one that's been done like. Oh, I've seen where. Seen two, and I don't. And yeah, the the uh, the guy that runs Northumberland Antique Centre near near you guys, um, Chris Campbell Campbell Antiques. He had both of them. He had one that was like a little Bichon Frise type thing, and he had a staffy as well. Um, But I could not choice to do a (laughs) staffy. It, somebody's dog that they just sold on when obviously the owner had died or passed away and someone had oh, passed the dog on to someone else, which I always find very peculiar so that's why for me pets are out I would never do that with a pet um oh they come everywhere with us my cats like yeah. if whatever happens we are together like yeah. when we moved house it was no we it wasn't a question of will they accept cats because they just want to have us it's as simple yeah. as my cats come with me and the alpaca, this is, we're getting there because the alpacas do make sense. Yeah. And this is why that he, we keep talking about their price. He is obsessed <laughs> with the alpacas um, and making the alpacas work because obviously they've moved out here to make Jolie Richardson have a better life. Teresa needs a better life because of the cancer or because of the cancer scare, either or they're, they're there because of the cancer. Mm-hmm. Jolie Richardson is always up in the loft trying to get some signal, um, trying to get some internet signal to be able to go back to work. Trying to She's a businesswoman. <laughs> That's all you get. Bye, bye, bye. Sell, sell, sell. You know, you don't get much I'm, I'm in business. You know, she reminded us of um, the Muppets, you know, uh, Samuel, what's his face? The blue one where he just goes, and business. <laughs> just reminded us of her. <laughs> Very much so, yeah. You never actually find out what she does. I don't know. No, it, there's no it's, it's never so alluded big. to. It's just she does business. And she needs an internet connection for it. Um, and she's quite a, to be honest with you, she's quite a chill person to start with. So when she does start to lose it a bit, it is slightly out of character because she does come across as quite chilled out. Yeah. Like yeah. She understands why she's there. She's not making a big deal about the fact that she can't get an internet connection. Not yet, anyway. But she she wasn't originally making a huge deal of it. She was, you know, when she comes downstairs after being in the loft, she's very much, it's family time. Yeah. She's cool with that. And they, they sit, they eat the dinner, like a typical family, and you think, right, okay, this is where we are. You know, they've all got their jobs. They've moved out here to better their mum's life. It's, you know, this this is the storyline that we're, we're we're going with at this point. So you're like, okay, plug yourself in. I'm here for the ride. You know, mm-hmm. what, what's going to happen next? <laughs> so. ah! Yeah. 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 So it's so when everyone goes to bed, isn't it? And it's poor Jack. Who... Yeah. They all sort of go to sleep and they hus- nestle down for the night, you know. Uh, oh. Nicholas Cage is going to get some after six months and. Bow, bow, bow. Get it on. Yeah. <laughs> There was some absolute 70s porn music going on in that room that night. <laughs> but this is what, um, I don't know if I blinked or what, but did it did it attract Jack out um, before it hit? Because the colour has did, a lot to do with it. He was sat on the floor. He was mm-hmm. sat on the floor. Uh, Lavinia was asleep. 
Benny was at his computer and the other two were getting it on. Mm. And then it just went from dark to like this overwhelming like, build of magenta. And yeah, but then the the the, the screamy noise that came with it, the, the Yes. It's like I've I felt like it was voices. You don't even hear it later on, and it just it's like building, a building. Yes, but it's and it's a lot. Yeah. And there's a mixture of screams in there and and, and it that's what when I say this makes you uncomfortable, this movie, these are the fucking reasons, is because yeah. of little moments like that. Cause it gets the high pitch noise. Yeah. It's like a tip, some, it's like almost. But do you want to know what's something crazy? When it ended, it didn't end for me because I have to. So, <laughs> but it's it like was similar high pitch, yeah. isn't it? That, that's it, what he can hear is what I hear all the time. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, so it goes like that. You get this like cacophony of like this 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 great big like rise of the noise, and the color gets really bright in the rooms, and then boom. And everybody like wakes up at the start or snaps out of it or whatever they do. But poor little Jack is the one that I think is really affected by it the most because he There's something to do with the color as well. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like that kind of probably overtook him more than anything else was the color, which sounds ridiculous, but you to see it is to understand yeah. that it it got to him. Basically, in this. The colour's been described as two different things. The colour mm. is the entity itself. It is the alien, if we're using that term, because it's from outer space. It is the alien itself, the colour. Mm. Um, but it's also like a cancer. Yeah. It's- the colour is a cancer. Um, it, it, it overtakes your being. It overtakes everything about you. It becomes you. It consumes you. Mm-hmm. Um in the similar way. So for little Jack to get it, because of his age as well, I think it mm. hit very, very hard, very, very fast. Whereas with all the others it was building. So Yeah, there was a yeah, it did, especially in Nicholas Kid. Actually, yeah. No, because Nicholas Kid have his outbursts, but it's not instant, is it? No. Because they moments. go they go outside and they find that a meteor as Nicholas Cage kept pointing out all, it's a meteor, <laughs> uh, kept pointing out. Um, it has hit the ground, this purple... Pulsating thing. thing. Um, yeah, and I love the whole, it could be kryptonite. <laughs> what? <laughs> and there's a, there's a lot of interest. You see, I don't know if it's because of what this thing is doing to them that they... There's moments in it where Nathan just becomes so uninterested. Yeah, like he doesn't care about it. And he's more concerned about the fact that they thought that he said he'd saw an alien on the yeah, news. Yeah, because he, he does was, a news report. <laughs> than he was about it being actually about a meteorite. He was he was like the the news people came down because obviously it's a big thing, a meteorite's hit and landed in the garden. Nobody comes to claim this or pick this up. No, No CDC, no government agency there's nothing that the mayor comes down and then leaves it's it's such a strange like maybe because in in lovecraft world in lovecraft country weird shit happens all the time so Mm. it's probably just a "Eh, move on next um but yeah he was just more angry with the fact that they portrayed him as someone who was like i've seen an alien rather than anything else they didn't talk about his alpacas enough and he wasn't no and it was when they were like, "Did you have a drink last night?" And he's like, "Well, well, yeah, I like, I like a drink." Are you trying to apply something? Like he's saying, <laughs> and at the same time, while and it looks great though, he looks like a deer in headlights when he's on that camera. Like he doesn't know where to put his hands. Like it's so awkward for him. But when he's watching it back, he's starting to he's starting to change yeah. ever so slightly. But Teresa. Is doing something completely fucking different because yeah. Teresa's preparing dinner. I didn't like this bit, Dan. I'm not going to lie. Well, little Jack sat outside, isn't he? And he's whistling mm-hmm. continuously to the man in the well, man which the I was well. like, I beg your fucking pardon. There's a man in the well. When? How's mm-hmm. there a man in the well? Um, but like nothing. A man can happen. stay in the well. Yeah, <laughs> get in the well. Um, <laughs> but you can't hear anything back, so to speak, just yet. 
And then no. you see Jolie Richards, Teresa's looking out the window as she's cutting the vegetables and I don't like this bit. Because you can see you can see where it's you can see what's gonna happen. It's yeah. the way she did it. So she's cutting the carrots and she's got her fingers so close to the knife when she's doing when she's cutting down, which isn't unusual in cutting senses, but then she just Nathan's trying to get her attention. Yeah. Because he wants her to come and see this news report and what a fool they've made out of him. And he's starting to get snappy at the same yeah. time. And just at the last, Teresa, will you come here? She cuts her fucking fingers off. Yeah. I think just, it's but, all these three, isn't it? Four? Just the lot, just tips? Yeah. Or... yeah. She cuts her fucking fingers off. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And I'm going to get through this. <laughs> and she looks and she, but she saw she's not there. Yeah. She's not there. She doesn't yeah. feel anything. She's not there. And then she just turns around with her hand that she has just cut the fingers from in the air and goes, dinner's ready. I was fucking freaking out. <laughs> yeah. Literally, so I literally hands in front of eyes. I didn't want to see. I was like, I don't want to see, but I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to fucking watch it. Um, but yeah. Oh, Christ. They rally around and Nick But she is as calm as a cucumber. Yeah. He's still sort of very hyper, so they manage to get her in the car. The two of them shoot off to the hospital, off they drop, which leaves Lavinia, Benny and Jack on their own in this, this very strange environment with um, the man in the well and the meteor. Yeah, and, and the alpacas. Yeah, and <clears throat> Nicholas Cage makes a very big point saying to Benny, make sure you put the alpacas away tonight before I come back. At 10 o'clock. Yeah. Very, very yeah. specific 10 o'clock. <laughs> um, and then Lavinia uh, goes out to see why Jack's still just sat there whistling. And then Jack explains it's the man in the well. And they walk towards the well to see what's going on. And then that's when that little creature comes out, isn't it? Yeah. Because he draws, little... that's what who he draws, isn't it? And it's like he was what he was whistling back to the little, mm -hmm. it's like a cricket type. Mantis thing, isn't Manta it? I thought like mantis. Mm. I thought it looked like a mantis when I saw it. I was like, oh, interesting. It was a choice, but it was obviously magenta. <clears throat> yeah. So you can tell it was affected by the colour or it came from the colour. Either or, not sure. Um, but what starts to happen is the magenta, the colour. Now, the reason why they chose magenta was because it's not a colour. Yeah. <laughs> they chose magenta because the colour in the book, the colour is described as something that a human has never laid eyes on before. Now, we're great with technology, but there's no way we could create a new colour out of nothing these days. It's just not something we could do. So our eyes will go, oh, that's a green or, yeah, that's mm -hmm. a yellow. We, we know. Um, but because magenta isn't part of the rainbow, it's, don it's, it's not a, a primary colour. Color. Right, it, but they deem it as a non-color at all because you have to mix two primaries, a red and a blue, to get magenta. So they say it's a non-color. So oh, this no, is how they got. Good. This is how they get around it for the film because they picked a color that was classed as a non-color, and they could expose it so much so that it comes as strong as it does with the hues and the purples and the blues and the. <sighs> so there's so many different versions of that one color they can use within this film that uh -huh. you're still seeing the same color but you're seeing different gradients of the color all the way through so and it is fucking spectacular beautiful that honestly it's for, for the subject matter yeah it poses so well <sighs> it's probably the it's probably the only thing that kind of kept my nervous system from absolutely going off to another level because it's the one thing that kind of, in such a chaotic film, is yeah. the one thing that's kind of like, okay. Well, the reason okay. why they also chose the red and blue was because red and blue is supposed to signify good and bad, the red being the bad, blue being the good. You know, it's supposed I remember to the Milky Way advert car thing. You remember that? <laughs> yeah, I do. Red car and blue car had a race. See, I know these things. Okay. Um, With that yeah, old. <laughs> <laughs> And all I want to do was stuff his face. This is going to be in my head now. Um, they used them because they wanted to show that it was neither good or bad. It was a mix of the two. Therefore, it was it was yeah. like it was just there. 
so yeah flowers, yeah i get that yeah. so the flowers start to grow purple uh, magenta the magenta. grass starts to grow magenta the fog it's not it's like has magenta. like a it's like a haze on it isn't it there's like yeah. a haze to it it's not like it's oh it's green grass it's like it's gone purple grass it's like a haze to it that you almost I, i'm convinced at some points are they actually seeing it or are we just seeing it that's the thing. I don't know. I think we. I think it does actually happen because Ward comes in and comes out. Ward dips in and dips out of this. That's true. Thing. So he sees parts, but because he's not there for the whole time, he's not as affected as the family mm -hmm. um, by the colour. Um, and Ward, at this point, I feel, as, has he already met Ezra or is he about to meet Ezra? I think Benny has just taken him to meet Ezra because he shows that Ezra shows him, oh, says, do you want a cup of Java? And he gives him the water. And because uh, Ward That's is it. the hydrologist, blah, 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 <laughs> he takes one look at that water, he sniffs it, and he's, like, really disgusted with it. And yeah. he kept saying, don't drink the water. All the way through, don't drink the water, don't drink the water. Believe you me, I ain't drinking tap water ever again. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> I have a filter. <laughs> um, yeah, he's a, so he stresses that there's something definitely wrong with the water, but he couldn't put his finger on it. Um, mm. Even more so now that the the colour has infested. infected. Yeah. You know, it's it's broken it down to its very bare atoms and changed its molecular structure. Ooh, it, I knew it, you were going to say that word. I love that word. It, it, it seems to me, that's what it seems like it's done. Yeah. And that's what it does do. Because if you look at what happened, the, the, the series of events that we'll get to, it can do that. Um, yeah. So they're out there. They're trying to work out what's going on. They, the alpacas escape. They've put them away. They escape when the parents come back. At the point when the parents have come back, Lavinia has lost a load of time, if I'm right. They're getting weird yeah. phone calls from their dad that isn't their dad, that this... they swear they hadn't made that any of those phone calls, but they're like crackly and he's screaming at her down the phone. And You can kind of make out that it's him, but is it not? It's like it, it plays with your mind a bit that you, yeah, because you know Nicolas Cage is, screams that it kind of like makes you think, oh, is that him or not? This is where you start to see him really breaking. Yeah. She and loses I, time, doesn't she, Lavinia, though? Yeah. In, section in the kitchen. She starts, She makes the decision to clear up her mum's fingers and the carrots and the, the knife. As you do. And she loses about half an hour, I think it was. I, yeah. I did watch the clock I very well. Was... But she was cleaning the, knife, the blood off the knife and mm -hmm. she was there and then there was water everywhere. Mm -hmm. And she lost a huge amount of time. So what they say is that the colour does distort time as well. So they don't know how long this period this happened mm. over whether it was a couple of days or one day or six weeks or a year that there is no mm, interesting yeah and i'll get to why in a bit when we get there but like <laughs> yeah that's interesting because this is i mean i want to talk about nicholas cage's transformation because yeah. it's his father isn't it that's his that he's he's this his father talking not him uh -huh. that's the impression i got anyway when he when he flips, when he flips, it's his dad. Yeah, but not him because he's that. That's and I don't know if he can if he knows he's doing it or not. I don't because think because the minute he the minute he kind of comes, you can't tell when he comes around because he just instantly changes back into Nathan, mm -hmm. and he's the caring dad again, kinda. Yeah, well, especially to Jack anyway. Jack is definitely the favorite child for sure. Well, come on, he's his son's a stoner. Yeah. His daughter is into God knows what. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. Jack's pure and innocent, man. He's the uh, last he's the last chance. <laughs> yeah. But uh, at that point she's flooded the kitchen, they've got everything ready. The dad and mum come back and they're like the the dad and mum are driving back and they see something in the road and they put their brakes on. Mm. And uh it is what looks like a sphinx cat covered in boils, from what I could see. Now, that turns out to be the cat that Ezra has when Benny and Ward go around the house. Um, they make the too much of a point of introducing that cat. That cat's called G-Spot. 
That was the name of the cat. <laughs> so, I mean, really, come on now. A beautiful That's a cat. Hippie, a hippie name for a cat. Um, but yeah, there's this cat in the middle of the road, and the only cat on the property that you've ever seen is G Spot. So you think to yourself, okay, what the fuck is happening now? That's it looked it looked burnt. Yeah. It looked, do you know what it looked like? Something out of the thing. It's the only well, way I can describe it. Yeah. Uh, you can tell. Now, this is the way that this movie goes. I don't know whether the thing was heavily inspired by this or the movie was Isn't inspired. Uh, Richard Stanley's version of the movie was heavily inspired by the thing to get it to this point. I, I yeah. don't know because I know the book was written in the 20s. I'm not saying that wasn't the case, but yeah, you know, it was written, but I don't know how severely altered some of these scenes are that we're about to get to, you know, from the original book. I've got the yeah. story. I've just never read, got that far. I haven't got that far because the color of space is about halfway through the book and I haven't quite got that far yet. So I've not read it. Oh, I don't blame you. I, 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 I generally do just collect books for the, how they look sometimes. So I get it. I never pick them up, ever, ever. But they get home and the alpacas are out and, and Nathan is very annoyed because he told them to put them away and they're not away and starts freaking out about the alpacas. But he knows that he did and they have a moment during the day of where Lavinia keeps... And she, the, the way she talks to him is quite weird. I don't. It's almost like she's on a bit of a loop where she goes, you need to feed the alpacas and he's going, but I fed them. Yeah. But you need to feed the alpacas. She keeps saying it, and I'm like, are you, are you okay? Well, that's the thing. Is it a time loop? The whole thing is so weird because you don't, like to say, the, the time on this is so skewed. She could be replaying the same moment over and over again, like a glitch, but we don't know. It's... That makes a lot more sense because she, she talks to him because she's been with him for the whole time. She knows he's not done anything, but she goes yeah. back to a conversation where I'll just go and get, you need to stop getting stoned or just stop getting stoned or something like that. And it's like, well, he hasn't because he's, he's been with you the whole time. Yeah. So you know that. And I just, I felt the conversation was so weird. You could almost say bad acting, but it wasn't. No, it was one of those things where I think they wanted you to realise that something was starting to be really off with the kids. The, al the alpacas are affected. Yeah. So it, it, they needed to pass that on to the kids to make sure you knew it was. Yeah. You know, you saw that it was slightly happening in the parents, you know, old Nicholas comes back, he starts picking the tomatoes and the tomatoes have grown amazingly and they're, they're huge and he's so excited because they've, they've come new and he goes into the kitchen and he takes a bite and they all taste like crap and, Oh, and this is where you see the change in Jolie Richardson as well as um, yeah. sorry Teresa because she's her internet is not working and she hasn't been to she hasn't done her business yeah. and she needs <laughs> to do her business and even she's she's now her whole manner is changed because yeah. like I say she was pretty chill yeah until he slammed right now tomato so tomatoes into the dustbin yeah yeah that was an odd choice. <laughs> Slam dog! <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Um, yeah, so it gets to the point where you, you've now worked out the dynamics changing between Teresa and, and Nathan. Um, you've also already just realised that the dynamic is a bit off with Benny and, and Lavinia as well. So you're like, okay, what's going on here? Um, and then as the night rolls on, which we think is one night, we, we yeah. don't know. This could be a month. You, you really don't know. They go outside for some reason to put the alpacas away or something like that or to there's a, there's noises is this, it's this something is that that's, bit, isn't that's, it? yeah it's something that's taken them outside and they've gone outside and realized that the the grass has got more coverage of the magenta mm -hmm. the um sky is a bit more pinker the you know everything is purpley magenta um and it wasn't before um so there's some weird noises kicking off in the barn. And I think is it that's where Benny and Jack go to investigate, don't yeah. they? And this is where this bit happens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're here. Yeah, we're here. Um, so Benny, the older brother, and Jack, the little brother, going to investigate in the alpaca barn what, what the noises are. Because it's a it's a strange noise. 
you don't know what that noise is because it's warped, isn't it? Oh, hang on, hang on. That bit isn't there yet. Oh, right. Okay. That's, that is after Teresa and Benny. No, it's before. No, because... Teresa and Jack. Is it? Yeah. yeah, it's before because they run out and then Teresa and Jack happen. Oh, I thought it was before. Okay. So they go in. The bit after is where Nicholas deals with the situation. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. this is the bit where Benny and Jack wander into the barn because they can hear the noises and they can't quite work out what they're seeing. And nor can you because you don't see much. This is where you no. see sort of an outline That's, or a shadow. Yeah. Um, and, but you can tell something isn't right because the noises that they're making is, the closer they're getting, the noises are getting really strange. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know something's really bad because you see Benny's face drop and Jack's face, so that and they're like really like, and then your face, back. and then you see like this intense magenta color start building and building and getting brighter and brighter, and uh, these sort of weird tentacles, but they're not tentacles because it's like light. That's it's, it. Yes, it's light. It's not like physical appendages. It's, it's, yeah, it's, no, it's it's not like. It doesn't look like it's going to come and touch you. Yeah. They're like still present enough. Yeah. Yeah. And you see Benny and Jack absolutely bombing it out of the barn to where Teresa is then running down the hill screaming, Jack, Jack, fuck Benny, poor lad. But uh, Benny. If I was Benny, I'd be very, very pleased I didn't get anywhere near that. But um, all of a sudden you see her jump down and, and sort of protect Jack. So she's leaning She's she's got Jack behind her and she's trying to shield him from these finger tentacle things. And and these tentacles then just and the light just consume the pair of them to the point of where like there's this god awful screaming and, and it's that I, horrible noise. It's awful. It's that like rise, that cacophony of like the building tinnitus noise again that comes. Yeah. And it doesn't leave, it doesn't go stairs. So, stairs for a bit. You're not really sure what's happened. Because... No, I was very confused afterwards for a, a a portion of time until you could see it. Yeah, you see Nathan walking down the hill and he's calling Teresa's name and he's calling Teresa's name and you see his face and he's looking and Benny's just stood there white as a ghost, just like he doesn't I, know what he's looking I at. Would, I'm not going to lie, I probably would have vomited. Yeah. And... On them. <laughs> And you see Nathan, like, he's trying to figure it out. He's trying to work out what he's looking at. He can't. Because so how can your eyes take that as a normal person? <laughs> and so he says to his brother, from what I can gather, get them inside. And I don't think you see anything now. I think it's when she's on the sofa that you actually finally see. see it's when you see him. Yeah. So you don't see him initially. Yeah. You see her, she looks bit fucked up yeah and the, sort of and then the camera kind of like does that beautiful swifty turnaround where uh you see poor jack jack yep. in her back literally they are melded together as one um oh they are melding together as one because poor jack's head is still visible like you can see him you can see you can see the outline of him but he is going into his mother's back yeah and the pain noise is coming from them too yeah. is fucking horrific especially when the light is touching them yeah because they're blistering yeah they? they're, they're blistering. burning everything because everything's obviously sensitive isn't it like it's there's nothing there protecting them anymore clearly because they're fucking morphing into one person it's like like i say this is why this whole thing about the cancer theme keeps coming back because it's like because it's it's consuming the, yeah. the the bodies are being eaten by each other um i don't know where my anxiety thing is sorry <laughs> um sorry. yeah i know what's coming next that's all yeah. um, <laughs> And so they decide the best thing to do because the noise that is coming from the pair of them is to take them up into the business room, business. which is a loft, um, and stick that them has, in the loft. It has fuck all in it, by the way. I just want to point this out. And a desk. A desk. And typically in uh, Lovecraft style, there is a triangle because he of loves course. triangle. I've, I've started to figure that out. 
Miskatonic University is also seen from Reanimator, which is a standard thing in Lovecraft Country. Miskatonic University is the University of Arkham, Dunwich. It's it's a running theme. So you see um, Ward in a T-shirt that actually has the Miskatonic University on it. So there's lots of little Easter eggs in it. But yeah, there's um, it's they take her into the loft because the the noises coming from the pair of them are just horrific. Uh, it's... it's wailing. It's kind of moaning, but it's like pure pain and agony. Pain. It's pain. It's... Yeah, it's. It... <sighs> And you just, all you want to do, you, you know, you can, the thing is, though, you is looking at them. You're like, you can't stop that. You can't stop that noise. Yeah. But I don't want to hear it anymore. And I'm kind of like, yeah, my ears. that's exactly what they had to do that to just remove them from the, the situation. Mm-hmm. When you see them, the best way to explain it is this is where the thing comparison comes in. Yeah. You know where the two head, the heads split, and you get the two heads in in yeah. the thing where where you get the iconic. Yeah. yeah, it's very much that way with the body horror in this section. It is. It goes I... not oh. a thousand. <laughs> yeah, I did. I I got a warning of the body horror and still watched it, um, because I don't do body horror. I'll I'll watch it, but I'm I'm dying inside while I'm doing it, like. And it it did give us a lot of thing vibes, and I don't know if it was the the makeup style itself that kind of like oh I get oh I see that, yeah. But the makeup job on them two was fucking beautiful. I and know it's not meant to be, yeah, but it was stunning. Well, it was done by two guys, McGregor Allen and Ricard Ramos. They were the special effects creators and sculptors of this part mm-hmm. of the uh movie and they didn't really between them have much in the way of big big movie experience uh, mcgregor had worked on x and pearl the two thai thai west movies thai, thai west yeah, yeah. Um, now i'm not a mia goth fan you can she's marmite it's fine um, he did a lot of the old age makeup in X for Pearl. You know, you know um, where he made her. Yeah, yeah that was it. Was, that was some beautiful craftsmanship on that. Um, yeah. That job, I quite like X, but not for her. I'm not watching it for her. It, um, it was just the whole. It very good as Texas Chainsaw vibe. So I was like, oh, I, I, I'm in this. Try to watch Pearl. I was like. What the fuck am I watching? No, I'm not doing it. But don't get us wrong, I do want to watch the new one. (laughs) But they've also he also did Wellington Paranormal. Now, if you're a What We Do in the Shadows fan, and I'm not talking about the new series, I'm talking about the movie fan, um, the original Taika Waititi one. Um, Wellington Paranormal are the guys, the police that come and knock on the door that do the checkups, and they did have a spin-off TV series, and he worked on the spin-off TV series, so he did a lot of the monsters in the spin-off TV series. Um, and also, it's... Ricard Ramos, he worked on a movie which is a glamorization of a true event movie, which was called Lords of Chaos, which is about the Swedish black metal band with Creepy Culkin in it. Um, yeah. Um, fantastic but... film. Lords oh, of my Chaos. God. The... Yeah, I listened to a really great podcast on that. Um, Vargason. Yes. Varg, 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 Varg Vargason. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Sorry if I'm butchering the name. He only got 21 years for what he did. The, the, that's honestly, their life sentence. Go watch that movie. It. I mean, whilst I know it's very westernised for what... Not westernised, but Americanized for, for what, what it was. It's got creepy Rory Culkin in it. Um, and I will always call him Creepy Culkin because he gives me the ick. Um, yeah, I get Very that. nice man. Probably a very I, nice I, man. I totally get that. But if you want to listen to just listen to an audio podcast on it, last podcast on the left did a brilliant, and it's not a long episode either because it's not really a long case of events. Like it, it's quite quickly done. It's a, it's a it's a good one. Um, the Wellington thing is my mum's one of my mum's favorite programs. <laughs> Wellington, yeah. I sh- I showed my mum twenty minutes of what we do in the shadows of America. I fucking love that movie, yeah. and. I showed her 20 minutes of it because it kept buffering. We give up. I was like, she we were just like, I give in. But that 20 minutes was enough 
for my mum when this she's never watched the film at all. She fucking loves the TV show to the point where she ended up ruining a whole series for us because she couldn't <laughs> wait to talk about it. And the Wellington one as well. She at just 20 minutes of that movie is completely like she is a huge fan of it. And my mum does not do she reads horror. World yeah. War Z is one of our favorite books, but she's not really like gory horror. So she liked that this was quite tame. Yeah. It was tame and it was funny. Um, yeah, she loves that. No, I don't know if people mention it. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where you know or you don't know. Um, yeah. But those two guys, that's all that they had between them, you know. And and don't get me wrong. That's a good, it's got, a good category. It's a foundation, but... but it's not something that you go, okay, so that's a progression to go on to Rob Bottom style the thing, you know, kind yeah. of amalgamation. That masterpiece. What the, your eyes take a very long time to work out what the hell has happened when they're lying on the sofa before they get taken upstairs mm-hmm. the kid becomes a non-entity to the dad he doesn't even think about jack all he thinks about is his wife he doesn't even mention the kid anymore because as far as he's concerned the kid no longer exists yeah um Lavinia's stroking her mum's hair and it's coming out in clumps and it's just like it's she's grey, she's veiny, she's I can't even explain it without you actually watching. Yeah. Because I'm visualizing it and oh, I can see it. <laughs> yeah. Um this is a, I will say stellar work from her here. In her yeah. Activity. And it's, don't don't get us wrong, it's just when she's chilled out, it's almost like she's it's it's too wooden. Because yeah. when she amps it up and she's raging, you're like, fuck, where did, where did that person come yeah. from? And maybe that's what she was going for, was the yeah. contrast between the two to notice that when she's raging, she's fucking raging. Yeah. Um, but in this moment, it there's, you generally think, shit, how much pain is this woman in? Yeah, and the kid is still <gasps> he's making, cr- he's crying, crying, like wind rises. Um, and they can't comfort them. They're both shaking. So they put them in the loft and then they lock the door and they go downstairs. But then they can still hear this other noise going off outside from the, the alpacas. Al- the alpacas are going crazy. Everything Cause, is and, quite like, because they and, can hear the mum and the son. So there's this whole communication thing going yeah. on between the two. Um, and this is where you actually get to see what 13 Finger FX made which is oh, the video I sent you. I've just watched it before we recorded and I really wish we recorded my facial expression watching it because I can imagine it was a fucking picture. It was basically they made a one in four scale of what only can be described as a homage mm-hmm. to the dog scene in The Thing where yeah. um, all the dogs are melded together and become one pile of dogs. Uh-huh. This is an amalgamation of many alpacas and Sam the dog. You don't see it happen. Which is great. Thank yeah. you. I you, fully appreciate that. You don't see it happen because I don't think you would have been able to anyway because the light is so intense that makes it happen. You just, it's yeah, done. it's just, yeah, it's just, yeah, I totally, and, and, and I'm very happy for that aspect because yeah. what you see in that barn yeah. is... I can't put into words how shocking it is on your eyes. Like I'm like in, I was in bed watching it and I am like pulling back. Like yeah. get, I need to get the fuck out of here. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> well, it's 13- a whole herd of alpacas. <laughs> 13 finger FX. They basically said that um, they made the whole thing in one in four scale and it was a big puppet. So mm-hmm. it was literally, um, managed by hooks on strings and pulleys and you know good old fashioned special effects right practical effects what you want they only made very limited uh one to one scale stuff so and for any of the close ups on the faces or on the dog face which you can't really tell is even a you dog you can't you can you generally can't tell there's you, you, it's, it's all just, just flesh and jaws and jaw bones and, bones and eye. It, it's the silhouettes of it and it's not a case of oh that's a dog yeah it's just you think oh hang on a minute that look that one looks different to all the others mm-hmm. oh where's the dog and y- your mind's kind of left to 
yeah get that but you do sort of hear a bark but it's not a bark there's noises that you can't quite place it's the like dis- the distorted noises in this like throughout the movie is what makes me uncomfortable like i don't feel like i heard a score going on in the background because of these noises that was the score i think yeah and it it's just it's a chilling horrible dreadful feeling yeah but yet I still watched it to the end. Like, I didn't turn it off. Um, Uh, But this moment is, even after what your eyes have just witnessed, it's still fucking shocking. You're going heavy. You're going from a mother absorbing her child to a whole, what I can only explain is about five or six alpacas and maybe a dog Uh, in in a big sort of, gooey mess but with lots of long necks because obviously alpacas when their hair drops out they've got very long necks and it's a mound of skin and flesh and oozy stuff and eyeballs and and it's all done in silicone it's all done in uh the most of the skulls were made out of uh 3d printed plastic because they wanted to be able to get the jaws to move to have yeah that makes it yeah yeah uh, it is a sight to see i'm not gonna lie the puppetry in it is Fucking amazing. It showed you the nooks and crannies of the um kind of like mortars that they used in it, like how they could just place their fingers on and it just oh it was it I'm not yes, it was shocking to say I was a bit horrified, but yeah. once I got past it and could see the mechanics behind it, it just looked fucking spectacular. It's so I'm really I'm glad you sent us it. Yeah. It's a hell of a job. It's one of those things like you get to see it from a different perspective to see the actual work that was done on it before it got all painted up or before it got like taken and off set. Covered in, and covered in goo. And, um, um, and stuff. But yeah, this is where Nicholas really starts to lose it. It's almost like he's having a conflict and battle with himself because he knows what he needs to do. And he knows how much they cost. <laughs> and we all know how much they cost now. Um <laughs> He already had the gun to, he already, he has a shotgun and he already has the gun to Teresa's head, but he can't do it. Can't mm-hmm. pull the trigger. And he just goes, oh, that's right. Cause Ward and the police officer are now there. They're in the room yeah. with them. Yeah. Cause obviously contaminated water and yeah. they're in the room with them. And he puts the gun to Teresa's head and then just stops himself. He's, he's cleared the room by this point and then just stops himself and goes, oh no. No, darling. No, darling. I know what needs to be done, yeah. and gives her the worst fucking kiss ever because it's like the most the goop. disgusting thing. <gasps> it's like there is like, it, I don't even know what you call that because it's not saliva. It's it's goop. It's, it's, stringy. it's stringy and it's purple stringy. and and uh, nah. And he does yeah. it twice. Um, now, at this point, also, uh, Nathan's skin is turning into what can only look like the Sahara Desert on his arm, and he's rubbing ice cubes with purple flecks in him into his arm uh his youngest son has been eaten by his mother practically and his oldest son starts climbing down the well well in the meantime just before all of this Teresa has done another ritual to try and Roger, um, try to get try to Lavinia, sorry, tries to. I don't know what she tried, what she's achieving with it, but she ends up doing like a blood sacrifice to where she carves in her chest a pentagram and also in the top of her head as well. That's and, a lost rune for family. Yes, she did the, yeah, I, I couldn't quite make it out because it, again, very realistic. So it's like there's, there's blood behind it, so it's very hard to kind of make out what it is. But in all all that Lavinia is doing what she's doing and being acting the way she is, she is probably the only sane one there who keeps saying, I'm getting the fuck out of here. It's a running theme all the way through. Yeah, all the way through is I'm getting the fuck out of here. And she yet she is yet to actually do it until after the events of what's just about to happen. Um so he goes, he tells Teresa, I know what we need to do. I know what I need to do. I'm going to sort this out. And he may, and it's like, oh shit, what is he going to do? Oh, he guns all, he guns all, guns all shooty mix, shoot shoots, and yeah. takes out all of his alpacas and his dog. Yeah. And he and, starts doing it full on, like, 
little Nicolas Cage noise that he does. Yeah. Um, kind of, this, it kind of breaks the tension a bit because it, it's really fucking full on. Like, it's not great. <laughs> it, he was required by Richard Stanley to go as far as he did in Vampire's Kiss, which we said at the beginning. Now, if you haven't seen that film, it's the famous meme that you see of Nicolas Cage with his eyes almost popping out of his, his head and the big, big smile on. And uh, that is the movie where he goes all out. All and, you know, it. you have a movie where in your history, in hindsight, maybe he should have toned it down a little bit. But that's his balls to the wall movie. Yeah. Well, he based his, he was inspired, sorry, by Jack Nicholson in yeah. uh, Five Easy Pieces. And the minute he starts doing certain things, I'm like, oh, I see, I see what you were doing there. That's, that is very clever. Um, so once he's killed all the alpacas in Nicolas Cage style, <laughs> he then heads to the bedroom. Yeah. And, and at this point, Lavinia's in there on her own trying to talk to her mum. Yeah. And the mum at this point has then amalgamated mm. in something completely different. Um, the legs of the it's the legs and the the legs of the sun, the arms. Am of I, the I'm, mother. I'm going numb here, you mind? Yeah, <laughs> it's the legs of the sun, the arms of the mother. the The face of the sun is still on the back, and the mum is the head, so to speak. Mm. But it, it turns into this. Oh, I don't even thing. know what shape it is, but it's like a thing of flesh with it's flesh. Children's flesh. Are legs and adult arms and two heads. And it literally just runs at Lavinia. Now, Lavinia doesn't actually get hurt by it. She's no. just drooling on her. Yep. Yeah. And the two, the policeman and Wade come back up the stairs, not Wade, Ward. They come back up the stairs and they, they literally just stand in there in absolute numbness Horror. or shock. And uh, you see the policeman go to raise his gun up it flashes over to what's going on between the two of them. And uh, then you hear a big gunshot and you see Teresa and the kid shoot off over the other side of the room, you know, like proper shotgun style movie. Boom. Yeah. And you realise it was Nicolas Cage that shot his wife and killed his wife and his kid. Um, because it was his responsibility. And he is so far off the reservation at this point that oh, I don't think I, he... He hasn't even got a ticket anymore. Like no. he's just he's not here. Because all um, he kept saying is that's not my wife, that's not my wife, that's mm -hmm. that's not my wife. And, Let's, and, and not, not, not forget the fact that he's fucking kids in the back of it all, but never mind. Well, no, he didn't, did he? That no. you know he never he, mentions Jack once. Not when he gets she gets sucked he gets sucked into his no, he doesn't. Um but this is then when Benny climbs down the well, isn't it? And so, I yeah, so this is where this is where Lavinia's like we're getting the fuck out of here. Yeah. And goes to get her white, beautiful horse, who had, had the best idea of them all. Yeah, fuck you. Fucks off. Fucks off. <laughs> yeah. And leaves that. But this is where Benny goes down the well because he can hear Sam. Fucking idiot. No. How about no? Don't go down there. How Thanks. about leave it? How about how about you stay on the grass <laughs> and just stay there instead of trying to climb down a fucking well? And there's a big pulsating purple something at the bottom did, of this well. Could he not see that? I'm not sure because I don't think they have. I think they've lost that element of. Um, it's hard to know what it is they can and can't see. I don't think that they have the fear. It's more now curiosity. Instinct. Yeah. Or, or like it's drawing them to it rather mm. than like anything more than that. Um it's just this pure curiosity or this poor, pure need to, to be in its presence or be around it or touch it or near it, even though they've seen Why? Because the Why? Gross. That's why, because gross. <laughs> you've, just, you've just seen what that thing can do to your mother and your brother. And, and, you, wanna go, and you want to go down and find out? No. No. Pass. I'm out. Well, Lavinia had the right idea until she didn't. Um. And he gets sort of eaten up, doesn't he? Like absorbed by a big. He's just, he's it's the colour. The colour just comes in and just. Yeah. He's gone. Benny's gone. 
Yeah, like gone. evaporated or something. So in the space of a few seconds, Lavinia has lost very expensive alpacas, <laughs> her mother and brother, <laughs> and now her other brother. And is this where Ward and the officer, because she goes back to Dad. Yeah, and this is where and, Ward and, goes, and the officer go to check on Ezra. That's right, and Ezra... Um, is Ezra there? Because yes. is he actually talking? No, he basically recorded on the. So it's a recording. So he recording. is. He's dead, isn't he? He's mummified. Then and That's, this yes calls into question how long has he been dead? This is where the time issue is very skewed because yeah. to mummify a body, you need it takes time. temperature, time, yeah. conditions. And he is mummified. Now, as far as we were aware, they only saw him a couple of hours ago. Mm -hmm. So how he got this far down the line. How long has this been going on for? We, we don't know. We, we just don't have any concept of, of how long this, this whole experience has been happening to the family. Mm -hmm. um, so Ward sees this. And as he starts to, he realizes that his uh, Tom. Uh, I'm going to call him Tom Chong then. Ezra's <laughs> head starts to light up with the, per, with the, the magenta thing like happens. beneath the skin like the yeah. light starting to push out of the skin it's like through it's through it's where my pressure headaches line. start yeah. from it's like right in the center of the head and it just comes and it's like it just takes them yeah it's the only word i can describe how it is because it's not like it it's just oh light and he's kind of gone so yeah and then ward runs out and he tells the the policeman come on you need to come with me and then next thing you know, you just see this thing swoop down and the policeman's gone. And you're like, eh? But the light hit the tree and made the tree no longer an inanimate object. Before the before all this happens, because it's the officer who takes the fatal shot with Nathan. No, it's Ward. Ward. Isn't was it, Ward? it Ward? I thought it was the officer because Ward isn't... I'm sure it's the officer when he comes he might out have the been door. Actually on the on the on the yeah, you on could the be porch. Quiet. On the porch, yeah. They so, think that he's going to shoot Lavinia because she's having a moment, and they think Nicholas Cage. He sees something in the well coming out mm -hmm. of the well, doesn't he? Yeah. So he starts to raise his gun to shoot at the color because you know that'll work, and uh, oh, yeah. he's going to shoot Lavinia. So the policeman shoots him. Through the heart, in the chest, it definitely hit him in this area, right? Yeah. We're talking no go, no coming back from this. You are, you know. El Gono. Yes, 100%. So he's lying there dead. Lavinia then decides she wants to stay. It's the way she does it, though. It's And I get it. She has nobody now. Like, nobody. She's the only surviving member of that family. And she's like, no. I'm home. And it's like, oh, you stay. Just stay with him. It's fine. Stay with your dead dad on the board. You stay with your dead dad. And then it'll all work out for you. That's when they go see Ezra. And then that's when the, they came out and the tree swipes up the policeman. Now, fun fact. <laughs> I don't know if it's fun. The policeman himself is part of a three-man team that own Spectre Vision. Now, Spectre Vision is a production company own and run predominantly by a Mr. Elijah Wood. Oh, Frodo. So Elijah Wood was the one who produced Mandy, and he also produced Colour Out of Space through Spectre Vision. Wow. And his partner is the guy who plays the policeman. That's well, amazing. So, yeah. I mean, I've seen some seriously weird films that Elijah Wood has done. Um, Come Home Daddy was one of them. Oh, do you think he's just got a hellish imagination? Like... Like, it, it's different Maniac. cinema. When he remade Maniac, I know a lot of people didn't like it, but he played Maniac so well. He sort of gave me the vibes of uh, when he was in Sin City playing the creepy... Oh, fuck no. Glasses yeah. dude. When, he re when they remade Maniac where he was stealing the women's scalps and putting them on skin suits and shit like that. I've nearly broke my anxiety thing tonight, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> That is a film that is is something, the remake and the original. Is... I don't know what I'm going to do if this breaks. Okay. I really don't know. We're coming to the end. You're going to be all right. We're, we're nearly through Do it. you know what it is? It's an octopus. I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we're at the point where, where we're near the end. And they're, they're coming out. Um, 
we think the dad's dad, uh, the dad's dead. The policeman's in the tree, and the tree stabbed it with all of its branches because it's being manipulated by the yeah. the thing. Uh -huh. They then um, push. I'm trying to think. They then push. Uh, Ward comes running out, and he's trying to rescue Lavinia. He comes running into the house, and he all he sees is the dad sat on the chair. Or is no? Because Lavinia. Yeah. That's when. It, is it not Lavinia first and then he goes in the house? Lavinia's outside and he's begging her, please leave, please leave, please leave. And she's all... And yeah. from her forehead, yes, that's the right. Light comes out and then she evaporates into she, <laughs> Yeah, she just goes into the, the universe, really. Like, yeah, she, she goes back the, into the colour, into the ether. She don't know where she went. No. And then that's when you get to dead Nicolas Cage. Yeah, sitting in the chair, perfectly normal, um, covered in blisters and yeah yeah he's not normal but he's normal in the sense of that he's carrying on and he's having conversations with the family and oh he's he just he's reenacting a whole dinner scene yeah he thinks they're all still sat there and then there's this brief moment where they do a very very clever shot where they've spliced it so that all of them are sat on the couch in high order mm -hmm. which is really strange to what look at but it works because they go from jolie down to jack but then nicholas is at the end with jack so sat yeah. in his chair. And um, he's like, my family are here. I don't know what you're talking about. And he's having conversations with them and they're all there. So he's watching the static on the telly. The telly is sending him messages of, through the colour and things start to, like, he starts to go towards Ward, but it's like his cells are being pulled back. Like, he's, mm. he's, you know when you walk in water and you feel like there's that resistance? Yeah, like, yeah. I'll be doing it's, it tomorrow when I'm trying to swim. <laughs> it's very much, that's the impression it gave me when um, Nathan is trying to walk towards Ward and you can see all of his, like, yeah, pulling. he's being pulled back by something, but it's not like you see his clothes move. It's like all of his no, no, yeah. articles is like, he has a trail of, like, him yeah. trying to pull him back and he's, like, resist. he's walking, like, against, like, some really strong resistance and Ward's like, nah, I'm out, mm -hmm. runs into the, into the, uh, like a, a hatch in the floor, and he climbs down into the cellar. And then there's this very convenient that he knew that where that was. Yeah, well, I did think that, but then I thought, right, we're at this point now. There's no going back. Yeah, just just to hide, mate, hide. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this huge flash of magenta to white light. Yeah, everything the the cacophony of sound, everything is just boop, gone. No sound, no light, mm -hmm. no nothing, nothingness. And the silence is deafening at this point mm -hmm. because you go from such loud, like, craziness to nothing. It's like you, your ears aren't... Accustomed. If you've not seen this film, you will not understand what we mean by the noises in this because it is something... It's almost like its own character. Yeah. 100%. Whoever did the... I didn't look up who did the score, but whoever's idea that whole thing was was absolutely Fucking ingenious. Genius genius it's it would have been worse if there was nothing because it, it just it, it wouldn't have had it, it doesn't have the same effect yeah so when yeah. that silence does hit you're still fucking uncomfortable because you're like well yeah. what the fuck's gonna happen now it's deathly silent and and you see nothing but ash white that's all that's left the building's gone the farm's gone the barns are gone everything's gone. gone it's a crater a giant crater of white outlined by loads of green trees. So you know that this thing has happened here. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden it goes from Ward walking through the ash to him being stood on the top of a dam. And then he starts talking about doing his narration again, saying that no one will ever know this was here. No one will ever know what I know. And I still won't drink the water mm -hmm. because basically they flooded the valley that it was in and this hydroelectric dam thing he's standing on has taken the place where he was. It's taken the place of where the farm was. Yeah. And then you see this little magenta praying mantis bug start crawling along and flying off into the sky. And you see there is still a tint of magenta. Yes. Yeah. It's still there. This was an interesting movie. I'm not going to say that I outright didn't like it for the reasons of X, Y, Z. Yeah. X, Y, Z being body fucking horror. Um, 
because it's not it's not something that I would normally go out and watch. Yeah. Um, but I'm not like yeah, I don't like it, and I feel uncomfortable talking about it, and it makes us feel a bit dead inside. Like it really, really makes me go cold. I'm not joking. But it's still not enough to make us not want to watch. Like I still want to watch it. Like I still am intrigued because the story behind it all is more to me than the actual body horror itself. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? It is quite late. It's basically called uh, I think they called it a psycho, like a psychological gore fest. Mm -hmm. Or it was no, it was called a psychological body horror, which is something you don't really get the two together that often. Um, I want I want to be able to move move past this bullshittery of my of mine where stuff freaks me out to be able to look at the actual story behind it. Like it's not there's there's more nuance in it than just body horror. It from what I can gather, it is a good old fashioned family value story. Yeah. They move out to a secluded place so that the mum can get better. They buy a farm. They do their idealistic thing where they buy the alpacas. They think that this is their future. And then they have that moment where they realise, oh, God, this isn't what we thought it was going to be. Um, and that is the premise of the story. Yeah, but until the disrupted. meteor comes and it just... Exactly. And it's all disrupted by an alien yeah. thing from a meteor. Little, little, little prayer. I can just say praying mantis because that's, <laughs> that's the only physical thing that you have to say that that is what's causing it because everything else is light and illusion and yeah. it's such a, it it makes us want to know and do more on lovecraft because now i'm starting to get a feeling and an understanding yeah. because and gets it like he, he he knows and he knows the stories and he knows the kind of the lovecraftian law I, I don't know I, I I have no idea, but I'm starting to understand it to where I'm like, oh fuck, this is like this is on another level. Bear in mind, this guy was from Providence, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. and I've been there. It's not horrible. It's all right. Um, <laughs> it's where they have the, it's where they have the Rhode Island Comic Con that me me and Robin all oh, right dents go to. So we always stay in Providence and. Uh, it's a very pretty place. Obviously, it's not the same as it was in the 1920s when old Lovecraft was alive, but it's his grave. There is a grave there. I've not been to it, but there is a grave there. I'm not, like I say, it's not the man that I'm interested in. He's yeah. a bit of a racist twat, as far as I'm, I'm aware. That I've that I've heard. I've not actually delved into no, the, the dodgy person, side of him. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not interested. I'm just interested in the genius that's the mind. there and how yeah. he got it out and got these fantastical stories and created these this whole universe of the eldritch gods how he created cthulhu how he created cthulhu. like he this man is responsible for some of the weirdest fucking stories that would never like even in today's world these stories fit but they're also so fantastical. You're like, how the hell did that come out of someone's brain? And when you realise it was over 100 years ago, this mm -hmm. guy wrote these stories, that makes it even more insane to me that someone had that ability and the forethought and the foresight and the imagination, regardless of all his other bullshit that I, yeah. I'm not interested in, but that, to be able to write these kind of, have this whole universe that's stuck in his brain Someone it's... actually had a fan theory to say that they think he was an alien from another like world anyway. And he looks like he one. I'm not yeah. going to lie. He definitely, definitely looks like he, one. That's why he knows all these things, because he's oh. an actual alien. Well, can we put him to bed for, for, for now? Yes, I'll give your brain a rest and we won't do another Lovecraft for a little while. <laughs> I'm happy to do it, honestly, because it's been such a... I feel like I'm going through a bit of an education, to be honest. I didn't know how to feel about this movie. Yeah. I still quite don't know how to feel about it. It's not as bad as American Psycho, where my head was just completely <laughs> fucked up with that. But and still is to this day. I'm still asking the question, did yeah. he? Um, but this one was kind of like I need to I need to start accepting that this is part of like it's a bigger picture. Yeah. That's what I need to start looking at. And I'm really, really trying. Yeah, I'm happy to, to not talk about it for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is now well and truly put to sleep for a little while. Oh, and no. We are about to move on to something that I know you love as much as I do. 
and we both love each film yeah. in their own rights in their and, own, and, and respectively. Yeah, Can't they're wait. both respectable, and I am looking forward to how we're gonna do this. Yeah, one. I really am as well. Um, we are doing. I don't know the dates because I've not done any research for this as yet, but we are doing the two movies of House of Haunted Hill. <sighs> this is where I'm happy. This is where I will be happy because this is such a great... It, it's such a great contrast to do the two of them because I, for what I... I, I know I've seen the newest one, yeah. but I can't really remember it that much. But I adore the original, like, so much. Um, be prepared for a grand opening, is all I'm going to say. <laughs> but you've I, yeah. Uh, Vincent Price's one, and then you've got Jeffrey Rush's one. Now, I know like, I'm a fan of the second one, but it will work. We are going to do what we did, like, with Carrie, where we're trying mm -hmm. to set the two and weave them through and make them make sense as, as oh, a, I, will, I will make it make fucking yeah. sense. I will fucking, I've got a cat on my foot sorry <laughs> yeah, I know I, I'm pretty sure House on Haunted Hill was a 50s movie 60s has to be late to 50s be. early 60s and then I'm sure House on Haunted Hill was either 99 or 2000 yeah so, I'm just trying to think of, we're in that we're in that we're in that wheelhouse so we're getting kind of a bit of both world really we're getting the 90s yeah. and a and an oldie so yeah. I can't and it's Vincent fucking Price. We have been <laughs> going for a year and a bit, and we have not talked about Vincent Price once. No, and he will star as our 50th episode. The but star just, of our 50th episode. It's just meant to be. It's just <laughs> meant to be. I fucking love that man so much. Um, yes, so next week is House on Haunted Hill. I promise I will not use my anxiety thing at all. Um, we'll honestly, see. I've punctured a hole through it. Um, when we were talking, when I finally picked it up, I've literally punctured. I, all I do is just sit and fiddle with it and twist it. Carolyn got us it for Christmas to stop us from fidgeting. Um, didn't work because I fidget even more with it in my hand. Um, yeah. So how's on Haunted Hill next week? Uh, you can find us on YouTube at eight o'clock yep. to watch. All of our episodes, all of our old episodes of the podcast are available on YouTube and available from anywhere you get your podcast from. This episode, along with all other episodes associated with Nerdy Up North, are available on a Tuesday. And as I have been saying on the other podcasts, please remember to like, share and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to get never be left behind on any of coming episodes. Uh, that sounds really good, doesn't it? It's quite professional. I try. I try. Right. Well, have we got anything else? No. No. Empty. I wish. Well, if we've got nothing else, then say goodbye, Dan. Goodbye, Dan. Stay spooky, everyone. Bye.